Hey friend, thank you so much for joining me as we near the end of our first week of Bible Tracked Echoes. I'm Mike McCurry, your host. I'm so thankful for each and every one of you tuning in today. Grab your Bibles and go to Genesis chapter 45. I want to give just a little bit of context to where we are in our week of broadcasts. We've been sharing a message that I preached just a little while ago titled, It Ain't About You, and It Never Was. But just in case you're a little foggy on where we are in this message, I want to share with you Genesis chapter 45 and verse number 1. The Bible says this, Then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him. He's standing in front of his brothers and in front of his servants and things. And he cried, Cause every man to go out from me. All of his servants left. And there stood no man with him, while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. And he wept aloud, and the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph. Doth my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near. And he said, I am Joseph your brother, whom ye sold into Egypt. Now therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that ye sold me hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in the which there shall neither be earring nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve your posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So, and this is where we get our theme and our title, so now it was not you that sent me hither, but God. And he hath made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. It was not you. Verse number 8 of Genesis 45, it was not you that sent me hither, but God. Too often, at least in my own life, I can think of myself more highly than I ought to. And we know what the Bible says about that. But what I'm going to ask you to do today is this, to think back. Maybe you've even missed the previous day's messages, and that's totally okay. That's not a problem. Maybe you can find them later on. You can find the archived version on podcasts or on YouTube and whatnot. But as you listen today, I want you to realize that hurt people can hurt people. Sometimes we carry our hurt, our pain, our problems deep within, and we use them as barbs. We use them as razor blades to cut other people down. I want you to have Joseph's mindset. And as we dive into what Lord, the Lord's laid on my heart for this, the first week of Bible Tract Echoes, I'm going to ask you, if you would, to tune your heart and open your ears to what God has for you. We're still talking about what happens when you realize the clue bird lands. We figure out it's not about me. It's not about you. What happens then? Well, we've got to realize hurt people can hurt people. So listen now to this message. I preach it on a Wednesday night to my home church. I'm so blessed with a good home church, and they received this message so gladly that tenderness was there. I know you're listening as well. Listen now, this message, it ain't about you, and it never was. You can suffer with God's providence in mind. You can share grief and provide comfort. You know that hurt people hurt people. You've heard it so many times. But hurt people can help people. They're actually the best at it because they know what actually works. They know how to reach people like that. Instead of bludgeoning everyone around you with how bad your life is, maybe you should start looking for some people to help. Look at, think about this. I realize Joseph is in Potiphar's house. I realize he's the, you know, the big grand Pumbaa now and all that. But I, I, we've already proven out that he had this attitude for a long time. I mean, he helped the butler and the baker when he was at a low point. So we've proven that. But look what he says in verse number five. We already read it. But now, therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves. He's concerned about how his brothers are going to be guilty. He's concerned about how his brothers are going to be beating themselves up 
over what they did to him. And he just wants to so share the grace of God with them that, no, no, it's all good, guys. You don't understand. I'm here because God wanted me. You thought you meant it unto evil. God meant it to good. You don't realize. When's the last time you looked at what you're going through and said, I, 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 don't, I didn't realize. God has me going through this because there are so many people I can help. And maybe it's not even there's so many. There's somebody, one person I can help. I, I, I'm trying to remember why. I've heard it said two or three times lately. Oh, I was talking to a gentleman, uh, deals some, uh, learns just some, some business things or something like that, and, and he, he was just, we were just talking. He, he's been in business for a long time. I was just picking his brain. And he said this, when you're holding a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Everything needs to be pounded on. You ever seen a little kid? I remember my parents brought back a, a, a legit coffee table handmade from Korea. They still have it. I mean, we're talking, this is ancient history, like pre Micah McCurry, all right? This was a while ago, all right? And I remember my parents were always kind, and they, were, they still do, they have a gift of hospitality, folks always over their house. And somehow, my parents always seem to attract younger couples that are beside themselves trying to figure out how to raise hellions. I don't know, if, I guess that's one disadvantage of having kids that somewhat look put together, I think. They're like, what did you do? How did this work? And so I remember I was like 14 years old, 15 years old, because I, maybe because I said yes, sir, and no, no, sir, and all that, because I knew I'd get my rear end wore out if I didn't. But because of that, there was this, this young couple came to my parents looking for counsel. I remember this kid. He had a toy. It was heavy enough. A toy plastic axe in his hand. And I remember him just wailing away at this coffee table. And I, I turn and see him doing it. I'm thinking, you're going to die. My mom's going to kill you. My mom handled it very well. If I had done it, I wouldn't be here right now. I'd be, I'd be in a wheelchair or something. But she handled it very well. And there are still, you could go, there are still little nicks. If you're ever wondering, it's not because it's like some 300-year-old antique from the Xinjiang, you know, empire or something like that. No, it's only like 30 or 40 years old. It's some kid wailing away because he had an ax and everything needed to be chopped into splinters. That's why. Whatever tool you've got in your hand, that's the one you want to use. Some uh, years ago uh, here, I had preached on the power of the tongue. And if you've got a razor blade, everything looks like it needs to be cut. But when all you have are band-aids and bandages, everything looks like a wound and needing to be healed. You ever given a kid a box of band-aids and set them loose on their little toys, on their teddy bears, on the little stuffed animals? All of a sudden, every single one of those stupid things have a skinned elbow and you don't have a box of Band-Aids anymore that's usable. Don't you just wish, Pastor, that Christians would walk around with a box of Band-Aids? Hey, you, you, how are you feeling, Brother Todd? Let's talk for a second. How are you feeling? No, no, really, how are you feeling? And not just, and I've said this before for lost people. If you go by a drive through window and you can just get that person's attention for more than about 15 seconds, if you ask them, how are you doing? You'll always get the stock answer. If they're not too busy, if it's not crazy in there, if you just say, how are you doing? And they'll, you, you'll get the, doing great, doing great. If you'll pause for a second and say, no, 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 no. How are you really doing? You'd be amazed. You become their therapist just like that. They'll tell you all kinds of stuff. I asked the young lady, this was back during COVID, so I realized people were on the precipice of a lot of things. And this lady just started spilling her guts about how her mom's in the hospital. And this was a time when nobody could go visit them, and that really bothered her. And she didn't have enough money for rent, and she wasn't getting enough hours at Wendy's and all that type of stuff. And we should do that evangelistically for a lost and dying world. But when's the last time you walked into the hospital looking for someone to minister to instead of with gimme, 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 where are my bandages at? 
Now, I'm glad that our pastor opens up the word and delivers it hot and fresh Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. When's the last time you came in to be an RN? You came in to be an LP? When's the last time you came in here to assist him a little bit? When he said scalpel, everyone jumps up at a, in a Baptist church. I got one of those. We need to cut something? But let's bind a wound. Let's be like that. Why is it that Samaritans do a better job than Baptists do? We have an opportunity, friend. In your grief, you can provide comfort if you realize it ain't about you. I want to thank you so very much for listening as you have to this message. Tomorrow on the broadcast, we're going to conclude. And actually, at the very tail end of the message, my father-in-law has a added remark that was just so good. And we just put a capstone on this message. I think you're going to want to tune in to that. But I'm going to ask you if you would to tune in. Bible Tract Echoes tomorrow on the broadcast. Please don't miss it. I hope something that's been said today, something that's been said this week, has been and will be a help to you. I realize, I think it's Proverbs chapter 13, verse 10. Is that right? Only by pride cometh contention. But with the well-advised is wisdom, if I'm quoting it correctly. If not, we'll call it a paraphrase. But I think about in my own life how often I can put myself up on a pedestal, how often I can think of myself uh, so highly I can look out for number one instead of looking out for God's will, looking to be aligned with, to be pleasing in his sight. If I were to think every day that I was looking for that well done, thou good and faithful servant, if that's all I was looking for all day, every day, I don't think you have a problem hearing that it's not about me. And it never was. But sometimes when I get self-centered, when I get absorbed with that person in the mirror, I can lose a sense of reality, of spiritual reality. And I don't want that for you. I don't want that for me. I hope this message this week has been a little bit of a reset button. We're going to conclude tomorrow on the broadcast. I'd ask you, if you would, to tune in. My prayer, as always, is simply this, that you have a great day for His glory. As always, if you need gospel tracts, we have 35, 40 different titles of gospel tracts, and you can get them for free on our website, BibleTracksInc.org. We'd love to send some to you immediately. Order BibleTracksInc.org. We'll send some to you for free. As I've said, have a great day for His glory. We'll plan on talking to you soon, and tomorrow we're going to talk about the not just the plan that God has, We're going to talk about the God of the plan. Don't miss it. God bless.